So he's got dynasty on his mind, but do you think Danny Hurley should consider leaving for Kentucky? I don't think he should consider because he's got the best job for him that fits him. It fits the Jeter footprint. It fits his ability to maintain Connecticut at the highest level. You talk about the six national championships. You talk about what he's able to do in terms of recruiting his type of guys. Having said that, there's one caveat, and that's really simply is the model of what college athletics is going to look like. If college athletics ends up with two, three, or four conferences, where will the Big East fit in the culture of college athletics in terms of generating the resources that he would need and the platform he would need to maintain the program? Right now, it's fine. Me personally, I think if I was the ACC, I'm going after UConn right now and bringing them in. Great basketball program, great history, great tradition. You got built-in rivalries. Dan Hurley, I, wa I don't want to talk for him, but he fits at UConn. Could he win at Kentucky? Sure, he could win at Kentucky. Does Kentucky have great tradition? Sure, maybe not the tradition that the Blues, the Bloods have right now in Connecticut. Do they have resources? Yes. Now, their facilities are not even close to UConn's facilities, but they have the SEC. And what comes with the SEC is money, resources, uh -huh. so that you can maintain and compete at the highest level. I think he's a perfect fit at UConn. His family lives the Jersey City lifestyle. His wife loves New Jersey. They fit at Connecticut. So, to me, I, I, I think he stays. But I think the one caveat is the direction of, the, of the, the model of what college athletics is all about. They've got to make sure they fit in that model. The question is, what's important to him? Because, Stephen, they didn't say money talk, but cash screams. Kentucky got a lot of cash. And it's screaming at him right now. Whether he wants to take it, that's totally up to him. Coach, I'm going to take you at your word when you say his family, they're Jersey natives. I, I, I know they are because uh, his, his father, brother, they grew up in the Jersey area. They probably like that. Connecticut is closer to Jersey than Kentucky would be. But Kentucky would probably be willing to throw a lot of money. They would probably give him a bump, a 500, maybe even a million dollar raise for what they were paying Coach Calipari. And what's important, because that doesn't mean I understand that in Connecticut it, he can get his type of guy, but he can get his type of guy to go to Kentucky also. And with the NIL deal and what Kentucky Quality would be life. willing to... You know what? I think it's cheaper in Kentucky than it is in Connecticut. I could Hell be yes. wrong. I could, I could be That's wrong. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You ain't, you ain't wrong about that. You ain't wrong about that. Hell yeah, it's cheaper. So it all depends. Like what Kentucky what's can the, get, a, Kentucky can pay him ten million dollars, probably nine to ten million dollars. Connecticut could probably pay him seven point five, and, and he's going to have to decide probably the difference in terms of can I can I say this his guy? comfort zone and his confidence. Can, can okay. I say this? Some yes. <sighs> Somebody's got to say it. What? So I'm going to say it. He shouldn't even consider Kentucky. Thank you couple of reasons. Number one, it's no longer the job it once was. Somebody got to say it, coach. So I'm going to say it. Well, I John Calipari. John Calipari has contributed to the job not being, Shannon, what it once was. You got one title in 15 years. You got one title since 1996. UConn got six. Let's also take into account, Coach, that college basketball ain't what it once was. The level of appreciation I have for it, you have for it, we have for it. The nation as a whole has changed. College football has elevated exponentially. The NBA, of course. You look at some of these options that have had. We've talked about. So many different things. We're looking forward to the WNBA. We're talking about, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about March Madness because nothing's bigger than March Madness. We get that. It, we, we're fixated. We're transfixed on, on, on college basketball in the month of March. But the fact of the matter is, is that without the rivalry of North Carolina or Duke separately is nothing compared to when they're going up against each other. Yeah. We care about North Carolina and Duke when they're playing yeah. each other. We see Kentucky playing a myriad of teams. We barely care to the degree that we used to, used to. And so because of that, I would say to you, if you Hurley, excuse me, you're the reigning two-time national champion, you're near your home, 
You got your peeps loving you there. Everybody loves you there and yep. what have you. UConn is a better program than the University of Kentucky. And when you go out there, even if you went out there and you won, it's not going to do more for you winning at Kentucky than it no. did for you winning at UConn anymore. And coach, it's just not. Coach, let's be honest. It's not. Lexington, Kentucky is not the basketball capital of the world. I mean, that will be Storrs, Connecticut. <laughs> it's oh, also, my goodness. It's stopped. also, as and, my father and, once and told Kentucky me millions of years you ago, in stores? listen, it's the halfway point between <laughs> New York City and Boston as well. I mean, there's there's some other positives. Stephen A., to your yeah, point. In, you, in, a, in, a, in a big picture, in, go ahead. In, in a big no, picture, no, like, Danny Hurley uh, is a great coach. He's the best coach in college basketball. He's going to win wherever he is. And that's just the way it is. I think his only concern would be, and, and Connecticut has been his destination job. I mean, when Connecticut hired him, he had other suitors as well. It's been his destination job. The only thing to me that would move him, the money's important, but he's going to make a ton of money. I mean, you know, obviously, would you like to make more? Sure. Before he's taxes. Generate Before taxes. Money. Before taxes. Right? Yes, go ahead. When was the last time you said somebody said, Stephen A., man, you know what? I got too much money. Man, I, I, I don't hey, want hey, no Hey, Chad, it. Chad, it. <laughs> Chad, I hear that, but I'll tell you what. They went to Monaco this summer with their team. All right? And it took them on, on a tour this summer. All right? Danny told me, he said three days into it, you know what he missed? The Jersey Shore. All right, so for a guy that you talk about too much money, like he's he's in my, one of the most beautiful places in the world, and and like three days in, he goes, I said, how was your trip? He goes, good, but after three days, I kind of missed the Jersey Shore. Okay. Man. I, I, I can go visit. That's Danny Hurley. All I'm saying, guys, is this. <laughs> on, a, on a serious note, but to me, it's not even about that to me. It's just an indictment on what Kentucky is in this day and age compared to other programs. It's like, listen, you, you, you just don't find yourself riveted and as caring as you were about Kentucky in the past. You're right, though, Stephen A., but you remember He's right. before Coach Harbaugh got to Michigan, was Michigan what we thought it used to be with Coach Jim Beckler? No. Before Coach Saban got back to Alabama, was Alabama what it was but what let me we explain remember? That. Can I answer that, Shannon? Can I answer yeah, that? talking about you're football, at, though. At, let me answer that. Shannon, you're absolutely right. But remember, the only title that Michigan had prior to Harbaugh was a co-championship in the 90s. And so what happened is it had been so long. That's why, all right, res re resurrecting them to the days of old. With Kentucky, it's Rick Pitino winning the title. It's, it, it's Tubby, Tubby Smith winning the title. And then after that, it's Calipari winning the title. And it's like, okay, this is what we're supposed to do, even though you only do it once every damn decade, for crying out loud. And so as a result of that, this ain't the days of Adam. Rump. This ain't yeah. the days of Rick Patino. When Rick Patino was at Kentucky, it was a different animal. It was a yeah. different beast. That has changed. Bill Self, oh, I, Danny I Hurley, one. North Carolina, got, Hubert Davis, all of these guys. I mean, yo, you, you I not got, the same. I got one for you, Coach. What about before Coach Roy Williams got to North Carolina? Were they the same North Carolina? No, they had fallen off after these guys in Guthridge. And, and then what happened? But they here, brought Roy in, and then Roy turned it around. I, Bring Danny Hurley in. He yeah, here's the deal, Shannon. Shad, that, that's great. But you know what? College <laughs> athletics and college basketball has changed. First of all, there are more good teams. Because, like, the SEC, back in the day, it was Kentucky and the rest of the ACC. Exactly. Now, because of what, what Mike Slive did, everyone invested in college basketball. Look, they've been ahead of the curve in terms of, of, of the NIL. There's no doubt about it. But college athletics has changed. Leagues have invested more money in their basketball programs that were traditional football schools. Now they're just athletic okay. programs. Why? Okay. Because they have more money from their television contracts, so there's more money in they invest in facilities and coaches and everything else, infrastructure. Yeah. Ten million and three racehorses. Come on down, Coach Hurley. <laughs> yeah, no. those Guys, he's just being polite. He doesn't want to go to Kentucky. All right, let's just let's just stop. He has no interest in going to Kentucky at all he whatsoever. Have said that Why would you leave UConn? I'm saying when he you could go have said back that to back. How he many said chips? Check with his wife. He put it on his wife. He could have said, yeah, exactly. no, I ain't you heard that he's being today. polite because yeah. he's a class act. He doesn't need to go down classic. there with all the flash and all that nonsense. He's upset. Can we ask you a question, Molly? Sure, Steve. Okay. Thank you. The man put it on his wife. Yeah. He said. I love him even more now. Can I ask the question? He put it on his <laughs> wife. He did not say, 
No. I'm not interested. I'm asking you, if you're the white and he sits up there and says, check with her, as opposed to answering the question himself, Excuse how would me. you feel? Smart Stephen man. A. Obviously, this guy is very intelligent. He just won back-to-back -back championships with this team. Happy wife, happy life. He gets it. Take notes, okay? okay.